So I made an animation without actually learning animation, and no, I didn't use AI, but I did make use of motion capture, so let's see how this goes. The first thing I needed was the idea. I didn't want to do anything too complicated as it was my first time trying out motion capture, so to keep things simple, it was going to be one sequence with a few different angled shots, and the idea is going to be a robot coming across a butterfly and interacting with it. Something simple yet satisfying. For the actual art style, I've always been a fan of the 2D slash stylized anime looks and having recently finished watching Attack on Titan, which had an amazing ending, <laughs> I thought, hey, why not give it a go? Now there's a million and one different ways to create that kind of look in Blender, and after scouring the corners of Blender YouTube, here's the method I ended up following. I'm not going to be regurgitating everything in that video, but to put it simply, you first need to create a few blades of grass, make sure each one has a bit of variation, and then join them into one object. For the actual landscape, you'll need to subdivide a plane a few times and then use vertex paint to define the area which is going to be the path, and the area which is going to be the grass. Once you've done that, you'll need to scatter the actual grass, and instead of doing it manually, geometry nodes are going to be your best friend. This is what the geometry node setup looks like. After that, you'll need to transfer the displacement data from another plane to your grass plane. Why? Not exactly sure, but check out this guy's video for an explanation. I'll leave a link to it in the description. For the last step, you simply need to create the shader, which ends up looking like this. And you're done. And to be honest, it actually looks great for not too much work. For the sky background, you'll be using one of old Blender Vital's favorite tricks. First, set up your camera, make sure the angle and focal length is all good, then find a nice sky picture on the internet. Pexels is usually a good place for them. Also, be sure nothing is actually blocking the view in the image, like this one for example. Inside Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and enable the Copy Attributes add-on. You may need to install it first from the Extensions tab. Now press Shift A, go to Image, select Mesh Plane, and grab your sky background image. Select the image plane, shift select your camera, press Ctrl C, and choose Copy Rotation. Now that your plane has the same rotation as your camera, move the plane into the background and scale it up so it fits the scene. You may need to reproject the image depending on your sky, and make sure the horizon line of your sky matches with the horizon line of your scene using the UV editor. I've got a super in-depth one-minute tutorial about this on my channel, but I've pretty much explained it all right here. For the lighting, it's just two spotlights, one for the foreground and one for the background. I used a gobo to create some shadows around the scene, and a gobo is basically something you just put in front of your light to create some artificial shadows, giving a bit more depth to your scene. You can put some kind of actual object in front of your light to break up the scene like I have here, or if you're using cycles, you can use the light's node editor. There's plenty of videos about this on YouTube. Now that the scene was finally set up, it was time for the actual motion capture animation, so let's get suited. Gloves, a suit, a portable charger, and Wi-Fi. That's it. You don't need a fancy camera, an optical stage, or a million dollar budget, and all of this was possible because of Rococo. Rococo sent me over their motion capture equipment to try out, and I gotta say, I never realized how easy it was to do motion capture, especially the way these guys have it laid out. It's powerful enough for pros, but accessible and affordable enough for a scrub like me. All there is to it is connecting the power bank to the suit, connecting the suit to the gloves, then connecting them to the Wi-Fi. And that's literally it. Inside Rococo software, just add a new actor, give it a name, and input your height. <clears throat> Drag the devices onto your actor, hit the calibrate button, and we're in, baby. Hey. When you're set up, just hit the record button and perform the motion you'd like to capture. It's really that simple. Rococo does recommend having a dedicated router for the best experience, but I myself did not have one and it didn't really hinder my experience. And even if you do have some things you'd like to clean up, Rococo provides simple to use cleanup filters within their software to fix anything that may need fixing. Cleaning up motion capture is just part of the process and it happens at the highest level of industry production too, so don't get caught up on it. Once you're done, they have a bunch of different export settings to choose from, which you can bring directly into Blender. Rococo have lowered the entry to professional-grade motion capture, making it a great choice for those looking to get into the game of endless possibilities with this stuff. 
It all works in real time, and you can stream the motion capture directly to your favorite software, like Blender, Unreal Engine, and Maya. This gear truly democratizes motion capture for indie creators and studios. I'll leave a link to Rococo.com in the description, and be sure to use my discount code to get 5% off all orders. Now that we've got our animation data inside Blender, we need to do some retargeting. Retargeting is essentially just transferring the animation from one armature to another. So I've got this animated armature that I recorded using mocap, and I want it to be put on the armature of my character, and that's why we need to do retargeting. And as this was a completely new area for me, this caused me a lot of headache. One thing that did make everything easier though, was the Auto Rig Pro add-on. I'm not going to cover the retargeting process in this video, but to put it simply, you essentially need to match the bones of your animated rig to the bones of your character's rig so Blender knows which bones to transfer the animations to. Then use that to create an inverse kinematic rig, which is literally just the click of one button using this add-on. And then for the retargeting, input your source rig, input your target rig, and test out the animation. Like I said, all this stuff was kind of confusing at the start because it was new, but Auto Rig Pro made it a hundred times easier. For those interested, I'll put a link to the video I followed in the description. At the start of the video, I mentioned that I wanted to keep this animation simple. It was just going to be a character looking around at a butterfly in the scene and interacting with it. I wasn't going to do a full-fledged multi-sequence animation as it was my first time trying out motion capture, but if it's something you guys would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments. Now that we had our character rigged and animated in our scene, it was time to set up the butterfly. I got this rigged model for free on Turbo Squid and imported it into Blender. The motion of a butterfly is very simple. It's literally just the wings going up and down. An easy way to animate this is by creating a keyframe at any set position and in the graph editor, adding a noise modifier so the movement is almost erratic-like, mimicking the wing movement of a butterfly. Once the wings were animated, I needed to set up a motion path for the butterfly to follow. The best way to do this is by adding a bezier curve and adding a follow path constraint to the butterfly. And obviously, as our character was looking around, the position of the butterfly needed to correspond to that. So the way I did that was by simply setting up the bezier curve to be in the areas the character was looking. Then using the offset value of the follow path constraint, I animated the position and speed of the butterfly along with the path to correspond to where the character was looking at any given time. I'm sure there may have been more efficient methods, but this is what worked for me. From here, everything is almost done. I just needed to set up a few shots, adjust the export settings, and hit render. And here is what the final animation looks like. I know it's nothing special, but I think a project like this was definitely a good introduction to motion capture for me. Big shout out to Rococo again for sending me over their motion capture equipment and for anyone who's interested, I'll leave the links in the description. If you guys would like to see me work on some more projects using motion capture, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy!